Mip. Mip. Back in the old days, the general golden rule of bow hunting was no matter where you hit that deer, unless you saw it go down in sight, you always waited an hour. If the questions start arising, was the shot too far back, too far forward, uh, gut shot, whatever, that's when you have to start doing the math. One of the most critical things that we need to learn as hunters to make us better hunters is knowing when we should go after a deer and when we should back out after the shot. This is Deer and Deer Hunting TV. This is where it all begins. Best hunting day ever. This is Deer and Deer Hunting TV. go after a deer and when do you wait? It's something that really requires experience because you have to understand deer behavior and you kind of ha have to bend there already. But that being said, after all these years and all the deer I've seen shot and deer I've shot myself and all the trails I've been on, I fall into the category a lot of times of self-doubt, you know, not a good shot, not going to find that deer. I have to erase that pessimism because the optimism has to be there. If you know you hit that deer, you have to exhaust every effort to find it, even if that means waiting to the next day. Okay, I'm gonna aim at a small circle and see if that sight is on or not. You never know about an airplane. It can bump things around. What's my rule? Well, if I see the animal go down, we follow up right now. If I don't see the animal go down, at a minimum, if I think it was a good shot, 30 minutes. There's no rush, no meat's gonna be lost, even if it's 100 degrees out. Now, if the questions start arising, was the shot too far back, too far forward, uh, gut shot, whatever, that's when you have to start doing the math. Any gut shot animal, six, seven, or even eight hours, minimum. Seven is a good number to remember in your mind. Leave the animals for seven hours. You know, even in the variables of coyotes, a high coyote populations, or warm weather. If I wait anything less than that, I really run the risk of pushing that deer, and that's something I don't want to happen because wounds will clog up, it's gonna make the blood trailing effort a lot dip more difficult, and it's gonna really reduce the chances of me finding that deer. As long as I have blood, I am morally responsible for looking for that animal. Okay, it's a nice afternoon. We're hunting here in Wyoming. And tonight's mission is to fill the freezer.
Ma'am, 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 ma'am. Ooh, hit her, hit her far forward. Let's watch her stay on her. I pulled it. I pulled it to the right, far forward, in front of that pocket, that precious pocket that we aim for in bow hunting. What happened here? My arrow, the sever, it clipped the very front of the scapula. So what am I dealing with here? A very, very, very far forward lung shot that's not going to put that deer down as fast as I want it to be. And now, decision time. Deer and Deer Hunting is brought to you by Sig Sauer, Never Settle. Outdoor Edges, game processing sets to do it yourself and save. 10 point crossbow technologies, there is no substitute. Cuddy Back, Cuddy Link, 24 cameras, one cell plan, $10 per month. Walkers, protect it or lose it. And buy. Scent Killer Gold with Hunt Dry Technology Plus. Apply it, dry it, and go hunt. This segment is brought to you by Outdoor Edge Knives and Tools. From field to freezer and everything in between. There is no exact science when determining if you should go after a deer or if it's smarter to give it more time. One element that can help make this decision a little bit easier is if you have quick, low-impact access to the arrow that was used and whether you have the knowledge to decipher the evidence that was hopefully left behind. Finding the arrow can be a critical component to knowing what happened during the shot. Now, another good factor, and I don't use these as much as I probably should, is having a lighted knock. That lighted knot gives you a lot of evidence. And then when you follow up and find that arrow, look at what's on it. Bright, bubbly blood, very pinkish, means lung shot. A deeper, heavier blood, well, that could be a liver shot or even a meat shot. And if you gut shot, for certain, the veins in the arrow are going to be covered in a green, gooky mess, gut matter. Smell it, you'll know gut shot animals when you smell that arrow. But any other bright, good looking blood, especially if it's got bubbles in it, hey, maybe you're on the way to success. So that was pins and needles. The shot wasn't what I wanted. Um, but you know, we take, you take what you get. Um, I couldn't get her to stop, I bleeded, I bleeded, I bleeded. Finally, I got her positioned. It was about 38 yards, 40 yards, right in there. And I think I caught her right in the front of the lungs. That's gonna be my guess. Um, she took off, ran hard. So as with any deer, when you don't know the outcome, you don't see that deer fall, I'm gonna give her some time and we're gonna collect ourselves and hopefully go collect our deer. So another key thing, I'm hunting with somebody else. I'm hunting with an outfitter, Trophy Ridge Outfitters here in Wyoming. I'm not looking for this deer by myself, especially on a property that I don't know. So I wait for the guide. We're gonna analyze that blood trail together. We get to the spot, we find the blood, we find where the deer goes underneath the fence. Now we're gonna decide what we're gonna do. Upon arrival, Eric Dunn, a seasoned guide at Trophy Ridge Outfitters, decided to cautiously follow the blood trail given the amount of blood and consistency that they quickly stumbled upon. That said, knowing that the shot was too far forward and with sunset only minutes away, they decided to not go too far on the chance that she needed more time to expire or worse, that the shot didn't deliver a fatal blow after all. Just like a shot too far back, in the guts specifically, you should wait seven hours. Now too far forward, past the front leg, is a similar situation. That deer is gonna need time to bleed out. And hopefully, hopefully you'll find the arrow and see that there was some good red blood on it, dark red blood, and not just fatty, hairy matter where you didn't get any vital, any arteries, any veins. If you do shoot a little too far forward, give that deer plenty of time, at minimum four hours, and you may wanna wait up to seven hours, just like on a gut shot, because it could take that long for the arrow, the broadhead, to do its job and let that deer bleed out. 
Coming up next, the search for the dough continues, and Dan Schmidt holds nothing back. People say, you know, it's only a dough. The PC version of that, that's nonsense, man. You're watching Deer and Deer Hunting TV. This segment of Deer and Deer Hunting TV is brought to you by Hunt Stand. So Eric Dunn, master guide, just a master hunter. I can't speak highly enough of this man. He really knows his stuff because he knows deer behavior and he knows the topography that he's hunting. That's critical. If you know the land that you're hunting, that makes you already a 50% better blood trailer. So in our case, Eric knows that this canyon that this doe ran into, where we left the blood the night before, it's angling in a certain western direction. So he said, okay, instead of making that whole half mile loop that we made last night, we're gonna come in the back way, we're gonna go hiking up the side of this, basically this rock cliff, and we're gonna come in the way where I think, where he thinks she might have ran down. Good job, buddy. Thank you. I'm glad we got her. I'm glad we got her. Th that was incredible, Eric. Oh, that was incredible. Good job, buddy. I'm glad we got her. They say hunting's not emotional. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. People say, you know, it's only a dough. The PC version of that, that's nonsense, man. I'm sorry I'm emotional. This was a very hard hunt. Anytime you take an animal's life, it means something, and I'm thankful for it. Good job, buddy. Thanks. Good job. Good job, wow. Buddy. Wow. That was an adventure. You know, I could sit here and try to be all cool and collect and say, you know what, it's only a doe and I've done this a million times and blah, blah, blah. But on that car ride over and that whole night, I didn't rest easy. I take this very seriously. I do not want A, to ever have an animal suffer or B, not put that animal down, you know, immediately. So it was several, you know, more than several hours. I'm sitting there on pins and needles. I'm anxious. You know, I'm angry at myself for blowing that shot. There's all those emotions are building up in me. I don't like to see this happen, but you know what? I know this is reality. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Hunting is real life. And if you don't, if you can't deal with real life, you shouldn't be a hunter. What I say, you have to man up or woman up and you have to accept the responsibility. And for me, that brings a ton of anxiety. All right. Now I don't know, I don't know where you guys sit on this, but I always say a prayer after every kill. So if you join me. Yep. Dear Lord, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for this wonderful gift and these wonderful friends. May this deer's body nourish our bodies and may its memory nourish our souls. Through this we pray through Jesus' name, amen. Now I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna help. I'll go get the truck. I'll, <laughs> I'll take that, I'll take that. I'll help drag, that's the fun part for me. 
I think. But <laughs> we don't have to go too far. <laughs> Good thing we don't have to go back up the hill where we came from. No matter how much you practice and how much confidence you have as a hunter, things are going to happen. Bad shots are going to happen. Don't think it's not going to happen to you. Because the second you think it's not going to happen to you, guess what? You're going to be humbled really, really fast. Deer and Deer Hunting is brought to you by Hornady. Accurate, deadly, dependable. Banks Outdoors, where memories are born. Get armed and deadly with Easton FMJ Arrows. Sever broadheads straight through it. And by Muddy Tree Stands, serious gear for serious hunters. This segment of Deer and Deer Hunting is brought to you by the all new Matthews V3. You know, a lot of people think mock scrapes are just for the pre-rut and as we get to the rut and fall. That's not the case. What I've found over the years is that a good mock scrape will attract deer year round. They're gonna check this thing out, you know, April, May, June, July, all the way leading up to fall. The key is always the licking branch. They're not always gonna paw the scrape. I always keep that open just in case a deer wants to work it. Sometimes I'll get images of them working it. Other times I won't, but most often times when a deer's coming through here, they're going to check that. They're going to check that licking branch. They're going to check in. That's what deer do. They're social animals. I might use a little active cam. That works great. I might even use some golden scrape or even leftover scent from last year. It really doesn't matter as long as I have something in that dripper to kind of pique their curiosity. They're going to come through there. Couple things to keep in mind with any mock scrape or any scent product. Always keep that at least at your head level or higher. You try to keep that out of a deer's range. When deer stand up, they're gonna be able to reach, especially down here, lake range. You gotta understand deer's 30 inches tall. So they're, you know, when they, if they're just walking by and mouthing this licking branch, that's right there. It's about waist level on a person. You wanna keep this high, head high or higher if possible. The other thing that I'm kind of concerned about with this one in particular, this tree, it's a box elder, it's been beat up by various licking branches that we've had on it over the past two years. And they will destroy those licking branches pretty quickly if they start chewing on them and pulling on them and that type of thing. So I'm gonna monitor this one. If it gets pulled down, I'll move it to another branch or I might move it to another tree a little bit farther down. This is a field edge. I don't do these in the woods during the off season. I do most of my monitoring on field edges, easy, accessible things, food plots, perfect areas for these mock scrapes. So what is the Robusto head and what makes it different? We've had this question ever since we've come out is, hey, can you shoot sever heads out of crossbows? And one of the great things about the sever design is it is probably the best design for crossbows for a mechanical broadhead just because of the way our blades pivot with the forward pivot technology. Um, because of that, you can shoot these out of any speed bow. It doesn't matter if it's a crossbow or a regular bow. Um, uh, you know, as fast as you want to shoot it, and it's not going to want to open in flight. So that's not a problem, and it's never been a problem. So then why would we come out with a head designed for crossbows? The Robusto head is 150 grains. Our standard sever heads come in 100 and 125. And crossbow shooters, a lot of them have been asking for a heavier broadhead. So we designed the Robusto to be 150 grains to accommodate those requests. And we also designed the broadhead with a larger OD ferrule at the back to mate flushly with a crossbow arrow. We're also using a specially hardened stainless steel um, to provide a higher strength than our standard titanium that we use on our standard broadheads. A lot of your new crossbows coming out are really, really fast. 
They're approaching 500 feet per second, and they're really starting to exceed the capabilities of traditional materials used in broadheads and arrows. So we decided to use the, the strongest materials possible to make a heavier broadhead. It's gonna be able to provide better momentum, better energy, for better knockdown power, today's high-speed modern crossbows. For this and more information, go to severbroadheads.com. Hi, I'm Dan Schmidt. For more tips, strategies, and hunting action, be sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Thanks for watching Deer and Deer Hunting TV.